Hello and welcome everyone. In today's video, we will be learning about how to create this kind of mug inside Siemens NX. Now, this is a very practical design and this is something which has already been manufactured. Okay, so I'll explain you how to exactly make the similar mug. Okay, inside Siemens NX. Okay, so if you are new to the software and if you are like following my videos along from a very long time, then please follow along for this video as well because this will explain you certain basic parts and certain more advanced part about NX. And you will also understand the application of sweep uh, inside this particular software. I have already created a detailed video on how to use sweep and what different command is used for. So if you want to go and check that particular video out, you can uh, simply go to the NX short training playlist and you will find it over there. Okay, so let us begin with this particular model. Now I'll close this file for now and I'll start a new part file. So once I'm here with the new part file, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch. Okay, the sketch will be on the top plane. So I'll just reset the selection. The sketch will be on the top plane. And here I'm going to sketch a circle. Now this circle will technically define the outer diameter of my mug. So here let's say I want to create a circle of diameter 250. So here I have created a circle of diameter 250 on the top plane. Now I'll click on finish. And now I'll click on extrude. Now in extrude, what I'm going to do is I want to extrude it with a height of 250 as well. So the diameter is 250 as well as the height is 250. But I don't want to go up by 250. I want to go down by 250. For doing that, you can simply change the direction over here by clicking on this button. Okay. And along with the extrude, I also want to define a draft of 5 degree, positive 5 degree. Okay. In the same direction in which the model is going. It's going down. Okay. Now once I've defined that, I can click OK. And then I can hide my sketch. Now, after this design is ready, the basic design is ready. Now, what I want to do is I want to create the exit for the mug. So again, I'm creating a sketch on the top plane itself. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to, I'm trying to create a equilateral triangle, the triangle with all sides equal. Okay. So here I'm selecting all the three sides, making it equal. Okay. So here I have an equilateral triangle. I want to define the length of the triangle as 50. Okay. And I want to make my triangle side tangent to this edge. So it is tangential to the edge. Also, what I want to do is I want to make this po particular point and this particular point exactly aligned. Okay, horizontally aligned. So now I'll click on finish and this is how my sketch is going to look like. Now after this sketch is completed, I'll create one more sketch exactly on the plane where the point of the triangle is coming. So you can see the point of the triangle is coming on this plane. So I'm creating a sketch on that plane so that I can clearly identify the point. And here I'm creating an arc. Okay, now the center point of the arc and the end point of the arc is going to be vertically aligned. So the center point and end point is going to be vertically aligned. Along with that, the radius of the arc is going to be 90. So let's say here I want to define the radius of the arc as 90. So I'll double click on the radius, define it like 90. And along with that, the distance from the center to the origin, this height is going to be 20. Now I'll click on finish and press escape. Okay. After clicking on finish, I'll press escape and then I'll go for sweep. So I'll go to surface tab. I'll go to the swept command. Now here in swept command, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this as a connected curve. So the top triangle will be selected as a connected curve. Doesn't matter from which side you select. Okay. Then here in guide, it will be selected as a single curve. Okay. Now make sure preserve shape option is on and perimeter is selected so that it maintains the shape. Okay, while it is following along the guide. Now here I'll click OK and this is how the sweep is going to look like. Now first thing what I want to do is I want to replace this face. Okay, I want to match this face with this one. And to do so I'll go to home. I'll go to replace face. And here I'm going to select the original face which I want to replace. And here I'll select the replacement face. So the entire body is now matched perfectly with this particular part. Now what I can simply do is I can click on unite and unite these two geometries together. Now, this is like a beak which is coming out of the mark. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an edge blend of radius 10, okay, on the front edge. So that will reduce the sharpness of that beak. So here I have created a radius 10 edge blend. Now, what I want to do is I want the edge blend here on this side as well, but I want different radius on different points. So I'll click on edge blend. I'll click on this particular edge. Now, I want radius 10 over here but radius 20 over here and I have done the similar thing in the fish scale flower vase video. So if you haven't watched that video, I would uh, recommend you to also watch that. Now here I'll click on this option called specify radius point. 
I'll click on first point over here. That is the starting of the fillet. Second point over here, where exactly the fillet is going to, uh, you know, complete one arc. Then here, where the fillet is completing another arc, and over here. Now I'll make sure soft radius change is not active. Okay, here the first radius will be of radius twenty, and the last radius will be of radius twenty. Everything else will be of radius ten. So here, if I click OK, this is how it's going to look like. So here in the starting and in the ending, we have radius of twenty, and in the middle we have a radius of ten. If you want with want to go with any values of uh, your own, you are free to do that. Now I'm going to click on Extrude. Okay, and watch this carefully. Now here in section, I'm going to select Region. I'm going to select the top face as my region of Extrude. Now I want to extrude it down, so I want to make it down. Uh, I want to extrude it uh, almost with a length of five mm, suppose. So here I want to extrude it with a length of five mm. Boolean I want to make it none. Okay, so it should not be united nor subtracted from the geometry. Boolean is none. In offset I'm going to define a single side offset of four mm. Okay, so here I'm defining a single sided offset, means it is coming outside by four mm. And here in draft I'm going to define a draft of minus five, negative five. Okay, from the start limit. So here I'm defining a draft of negative five from the start limit. And once I'm done with that, I'll click OK. So this is how this particular body is going to look like. So technically, right now we have two bodies. Okay, one is the top cover kind of thing, and one is the mug itself. Okay. Now what I'll do is before I continue with shell or any other thing, I'll click on edge blend, and I'll define the blend of radius thirty to the bottom most edge. Okay. Now we have two bodies again, as I, as we have discussed. Now, if you want to see the two bodies, what you can also do is you can right click in the blank area of tree and just deactivate timestamp order, and that way you can see the two bodies. Okay. Now, if I hide one of the body from here, you can see I have hidden the cup, uh, the cup top portion or the mug top cover, and here this is a mug itself. So first, I'm going to hide my mug and only see this body over here. I'm going to click on shell. The thickness will be 1.8, and I want to shell it from the bottom of thickness 1.8. So, like this, it is going to look like. So, this is a shell of thickness 1.8. Now, I am going to hide this body and show the other body, and again, I am going to shell this with a thickness of 1.8, removing the top portion. Now, I'll show both the bodies. So, now both the bodies are like thick, having a thickness, and they are hollow, right? Now, what I'll do is I'll right-click in the blank area again and choose timestamp order to turn back on. So that I can see all the features again. So here is the last two cell which has been applied. Now what I'll do is I'll click on Unite, and some of you might not be aware about this particular feature of Unite. I can select a target body, I can select a tool body, and here I can say Regions, define Regions. I can select I want to select a region to remove, and here I can select the internal part. So that region need to get removed. So ultimate result will look like this. Okay. So this is how simple it is to create you know such complex things. Okay, normally people uh, can use different methods, different form like sweep and other commands. But this is how easy it is, you know, to create this particular part. Again, I'll demonstrate that particular feature. What I'll do is I'll go to the surface tab. I'll click on the tube command. I'll set the radius of the tube to seven, and I'll select the bottom edge. And here in boolean, I'm setting selecting again none. Okay, very important part in boolean. Everywhere boolean is none for now. Now I'll go to unite again. And because some part of the tube is entering inside the mug, I'll select this as my target body. This as my tool body. I'll click on Define Regions. I'll click on Remove, and I'll remove this region, which is entering in the mug. Okay, so this is how it's you know simple it is to create this kind of geometries. Along with that, I want to provide an edge blend of radius five on this and this edge as well. So here the edge blend is also provided. So technically the mug is completed, but we need a handle attached to it. Okay. Now to model the handle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sketch. I'm selecting the front plane or the side plane technically to create a sketch, and I'm creating a simple L-shaped geometry like this. So one and two. Now the distance from the origin is going to be 90. Okay, and then from this corner till the origin, this gap is going to be suppose 170. Now the total height of this handle or the total length of the handle is going to be more than the length of the mug or more than the center of the mug. So I'm going to keep it 150 for now. Okay, and this point and the origin will be exactly in the same line, horizontally aligned. Now here, what I want to do is I want to create a fillet here on this side of radius, let's say 30. So here I have created a fillet of radius 30. I'll click on finish, and this is my guide. Now I'll click on sketch. 
I'll choose the option called on path. Okay, I want to first create a sketch on this path over here. Okay, on this side exactly. Okay, so here I'll select uh, this particular path. I'll click OK. Now here I want to create a circle. Let's have diameter 30. Okay, at the very end. Now I'm creating a line from the origin, an extra vertical line. Now I'm going to trim this extra part. Then I'm going to extend this on the other side. Then I'm going to trim the circle as well. So likewise, you can also create a similar geometry. And here I can click on finish. So it's like a semicircle which I've created. Now again, I'll click on, click on sketch. This time I'll select this particular path. And exactly at 15% arc length, okay, exactly at 15% of the arc length, I want to create one more sketch. So here I have defined 15% in the arc length. Here I'll click OK. And what I want to technically create here is a circle again. Let's say this time of diameter 40. And then I want to define again two lines like from here vertically going up. So make sure it goes vertically up, not tangent. So if you are facing any difficulty or if you are getting tangent constraint, again multiple times you can just make the line like this and then make it vertical manually. Then click on extend and extend this line on both the sides. Make sure it touches both the corner and then trim this particular part. Okay. So this is how we can make both the semicircles. Okay. And once both the semicircles are ready, you can also relocate the circle. To relocate the circle, uh, click on reattach inside the sketch. And I don't want to keep it at 15%. I want to increase it slightly or decrease it slightly. Let's say 12.5%. Okay. A slightly behind. So I'll click OK. I'll click on finish. So this is how my sketch is going to look like. Now I'll click on sweep. I'll go to the surface tab. I'll click on sweep. Now here in sweep, the section number one will be this. I'll click on add. The section number two will be this. And in guide, uh, I'll have tangent curve this time. And this is the tangent curve which I want to have. Okay. Now preserve shape is on, uh, orientation and everything is going to be the default thing. I'll click OK and this is how the sweep is going to look like. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to hide all the sketches which I just created. Okay. And then I'm going to define the round over here in the bottom. So here I'm defining an edge blend in the bottom of radius 10. I'll click OK over here. And this is how this particular part is looking. I'll click on shell, which is in the home tab. I want to remove the top most portion. So the top portion is going to be open and this backside portion is also going to be open. So this is how the shell is going to look like. And you guessed it right. We are again going to use unite with this part. Okay. And here in tool body, I'm going to select this. In defined regions, I want to remove this extra region and this extra region in the middle. I'll click OK. And this is how uh, perfect the handle is going to look like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide some edge blend in order to complete this particular part. And providing edge blend is again difficult. So I want you to follow along. So here I'll click on edge blend. I'll define a radius of 10 to this outer edge of the handle. And here I'll click OK. So here the edge blend of radius 10 is applied. Now here to the inner part, I want to provide 10 plus 1.8 because 1.8 is the thickness. Okay. So here 11.8 will be the radius because 1.8 thickness is what I'm using. Okay. If you remember in the previous shell also. You can see the thickness is 1.8. To keep it uniform, this is the reason I am using this thickness. Now, because here the thickness is reducing drastically, here I want to provide a radius of 7 on this side and on the other side as well. Okay, so you can see this part is going to have a radius of 7. Okay, and this is how this particular part is going to look like. Now, from the bottom, the inner part, the inner edge will have a radius of 1.2. Okay, so here I am defining a radius of 1.2 to the inner edge. And it will be a tangential curve selection, so it will go all the way around. Okay. And then this is for making the body manufacturable. Okay. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to manufacture this geometry. Now, here again, a radius of 1.2. I'll click on apply. Now, for the outer edge. Okay. For the outer edge, I want to again select tangent curve. Okay. But this time, I want to keep it a little different. So, here, I'll select the outer edge. I'll set the radius of 0.6, which is way smaller. Then I'll go to variable radius point. I'll set a point here. Then I'll set a point here. Okay. At the starting of the fillet and at the ending of the fillet. So I'm setting two points. Now here in the first point, the radius will be uh, three. So here I'm defining the radius of three. And here in the last point also, the radius is going to be three. So the first point and last point is going to have a radius of three. I'll click on apply and I'll do a very similar thing on the inner side as well. So here 0.6 radius. Variable radius point. This is going to be the starting of the radius. This is going to be the ending of the radius. 
then again this is going to be the starting of the radius and this is going to be the ending of the radius the starting of this particular radius will have a radius of 3 and it is going to transition to 0.6 and here also it will have a radius of 3 so here in both the cases the variable radius is set to 3 here i click ok and this is how i can complete the map design okay now to make it look better what i can technically do is i can press ctrl j i can select the mug i can click ok then here i can change the color let's say i want to keep it a different color like deep lemon color for this example then i'll go to view i'll choose perspective on i'll go to shade it first and then to studio so you can see how exactly the mug is going to look okay in the real world condition so this is how uh, effectively you can create this kind of geometries inside nx okay so thank you very much for watching have a great day ahead